Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on limits. I have taken up a very difficult question here, which can be solved using some advanced calculus strategies. Now, these types of questions can help you in the entrance exams for good institutes. The question here is also picked from one of such institute. It is limit x approaches infinity for square root of x square minus 4x minus ax minus b equals to 7 then find value of a and b you can always pause the video answer the question and then look into my suggestions now to solve such questions we might take help of binomial series so let me first explain what binomial series is and then we are going to apply the strategy so you know you know about the binomial expansion which is a plus b to the power of n is equals to nc0 a to the power of n plus nc1 a n minus 1 b plus nc2 a n minus 1 times p square and so on here the exponents n and r are whole numbers non-negative integers the binomial coefficient ncr is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial right so uh, we should write few terms here which are going to help us nc0 is going to be 1 nc1 is going to be n nc2 is going to n minus 2 will give you two terms in the numerator which would be n times n minus 1 the rest will cancel right and r factorial will give you 2 factorial here do you see that so nc2 will be this and for nc3 let's rewrite nc3 will be will have three terms multiplied here n minus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 divided by 3 factorial so that is how these binomial coefficients could be calculated and and placed in this particular series right so so that is just a, ref, a refresh on what this binomial expansion is now let's take few uh, important examples here especially the case when a equals to 1 right in that case we get 1 plus b to the power of n correct so now of b right and we'll have nc0 which is basically 1 plus nc1b plus nc2b square so on right so ncr b to the power of r ncn i mean ncn b to the power of n correct so the series will now get converted like this now this is extremely important series which we are going to use many times to find limits now Newton actually utilized this binomial theorem this is all actually expansion of binomial theorem so Newton actually used this series in a very different way he kind of extended this series so that we could use it even when n is not a whole number right? that's the whole idea right so that's what he did and uh, uh, he took help of McLaughlin series right so so that was the addition to this and then utilize this series so that we could actually use the same expansion with rational exponents that's the whole idea right so in that case i'll just give you the result which is very important for us to take while we solve our questions right so if i have one plus x to the power of n right and in this particular case the value of x uh, extended for let me write here expanded for uh, this value of absolute value of x less than 1 a very special case right so in that case 1 plus x to the power of n could be written as 1 plus the same formula what I'm trying to say exactly the same formula 
However, you can use n as a rational number. That's very important, right? So, so we'll write this as nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial x square plus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial x cube and so on. You get an idea, right? So that is the use which, that is the extension which we are going to use in most of the cases where limits is very difficult to find. And we'll actually, you will soon learn that whenever we have a limit uh, which will be of the type infinity minus infinity, there is an indeterminate we'll use this particular series to solve. Perfect. So with that, let's now solve our question. Okay, so a brief introduction of binomial series will really help us to solve this particular limit. So the question for us is, if limit x approaches infinity for square root of x square minus 4x minus ax minus b equals to 7, then find the value of a and b. As you can see, it is of the form infinity minus infinity, right? So that is the form. So it is an indeterminate which can have a limit. We are given limit of 7. Now we need to find what a and b is. So our strategy here is to use binomial series. So what we are going to do here is we'll make a small substitution. We'll say let x equals to 1 over t. So when x approaches, in this case, infinity, then t should approach 0, right? So 1 over 0 is infinity. So what we get here is limit t approaches 0 for 1 over t square minus 4 over t square root minus a over t minus b. Now this limit is given to us as equal to 7, right? This is given to us as equal to 7. Now let's simplify this. So we get limit t approaches 0 square root of, so t squared is common term, so we get t minus, I'm mean, sorry, 1 minus 4t, right? 1 minus 4t over t squared within square root. And here we have a term which is minus, I can take t common here also, right? So that gives me a plus bt, right? equals to 7. Now, uh, now here t square within square root can be taken outside so we get limit t approaches 0 and we get we could write this as square root of 1 minus 4t minus a minus bt so we are just taking t common right over t correct so taking this out, we can take common t and then we get this equals to 7. Now, as you can see, t is approaching 0, right? So since t is approaching 0, 4t is actually less than, less than 1, correct? 4t is less than 1 and therefore it is actually approaching 0, right? Now, since it is approaching 0 and that too from positive side, square root will be uh, from positive side, we can use the binomial series, right? That's the whole idea. So the binomial expansion, which we just learned, which we can utilize, let me rewrite here, is 1 plus x to the power of n is equal to 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 x squared plus n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over this is actually 2 factorial 3 factorial right times x squared plus so on correct so that is the expansion the binomial series which we are going to use here so the term here as you can see is basically 
instead of uh, x, we have 4t here, right? So that's what we have. So if you expand this, what do you get? So we get limit t approaches 0. So this is to the power of half. So let me rewrite this first, and then we'll expand it in the next statement. So we have here t, and I could write this as 1 minus 4t to the power of half, right? And we have the term minus a minus bt. As you see, in this case, 4t is basically much less than 0. It approaches, um, I'm mean, sorry, much less than 1. It approaches 0. Now we'll apply this expansion here, right? So we know all this is equal to 7. So let me write 7 here. So 7 is equal to limit t approaches 0. So when you expand, the first term is 1. Now in this case, we have minus 4t, right? So all the terms where x is odd power will be negative, and terms where x is positive power will be positive, right? Minus 4t, we have to substitute for x, correct? In this formula, n is equals to half, right? So that's what we'll do. So what we get here is 1 minus, so half times, I should have written half first, half times minus 4t, right? So half times 4t, correct? So that is your first term, minus I wrote, earlier, right? Then, when this is a positive power, it will be positive here, n is half, so half times half minus 1 over 2 factorial, which is 2, right, 2 factorial, or you can write 2 factorial, and x square means 4t square, right, so that is the square, so we'll write this as 4t whole square minus, because the next term is cube, so that will give you minus, so on. I'm not writing the other terms since t is approaching 0 and for higher powers of t, those terms will be approaching 0. Correct? Okay. And then we have this term here, minus a minus bt. So we have minus a minus bt. Correct? And all this is multiplied by 1 over t. Good. So that is what you have. Now, if you look at it, when you multiply everything by 1 over t, so at this stage, you will get, this will be, uh, so let's, let's just expand this, right? So what we get here is 7 equals to limit t approaches 0. So when you multiply here, the first term is minus 1. So minus 1 divided by t. So, so let's rewrite this. So we have 1 here, and in this case, we get minus 2t, right? So we get minus 2t. Here, it is half minus 1 is minus 1, right? So, so this term, basically, you find that this term will be having a coefficient of, of t. So when you divide, that will be going to 0, right? So this term will be, um, you can write this as uh, half, you can write 1 over 8 with a negative term. We'll just keep it like this, over 2, and 16 t square, okay, minus so on. All these terms will be actually 0, and here we have minus a and then we have minus bt, everything is divided, sorry, by t. So, so in this particular expression, when t is approaching 0, higher powers of t, you know, will be approaching 0. So this will approach to 0, right? All the terms after this will also approach to 0. 
So what are you left with? So if you analyze this, you are left with 1 minus a and with t, you are left with uh, minus 2t minus bt, correct? So that is what we are left with. So you could write this as limit t approaches 0, 1 minus a, right? That is one term which is left. And then if you take minus common, we have 2t plus bt, right? These are the t terms left over t. That is what is left with us. Now, if this has to have a limit, right? So, in that case, 1 minus a should be equal to 0. Correct? So, if this has to have a limit, so in that case, 1 minus a should be 0. So, let me rewrite this as 7 equals to limit t approaches 0. So, the first term is 1 minus a over t. The other term, I could write this as minus t and t cancel, or you can say t common, 2 plus b, right? over t right now to have a limit in this particular case 1 minus a should be equal to 0 right so this implies that 1 minus a should be equal to 0 which gives you a as equal to 1 correct so so a should be equal to 0 so a should be equal to 1 right now the second part here is 7 is e but it has a limit of 7 so when a is equal to 1, we get 7 equals to minus 2 plus b, right? Because this t and t will cancel. So 7 is basically equal to minus 2 plus b. So solving this, we get minus 7 equals to 2 plus b or b equals to minus 7 minus 2, which is minus 9. So we get the value of b as minus 9. Is that clear? So the two values will be a equals to 1 and b equals to minus 9. Perfect. So that is how you are going to solve this particular question. Now let's get back to some entry cases involved here. Now these questions which are of the form infinity minus infinity could be solved using binomial series which is here. Now in this series, since we are dividing by t, right, all the terms, all the terms with t square and higher powers will be neglected since t approaches 0. That's why we didn't really work on this and the later terms we omitted since they will be 0, right? Now, for the limit to exist, we had the term 1 minus a over t where t approaches 0. So 1 minus a should be 0, otherwise the limit will not exist. So that gave us one equation, and from there we calculated a as 1. Now if a is 1, the first term is 0, we are left with t times 2 plus b with a negative sign. t and t cancels, so we are left with 2 plus b with a negative sign, and that should be equal to 7. So we got our equation minus 7 equals to 2 plus b, solving which we get b equals to minus 9. Perfect. So that is how you're going to solve it. So I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.